Welcome back guys. Today we're going to take a look at Carnival Cruise Lines. Now I'm going to be going through the numbers in this video. If you want more details about the corporation and how they do business, make sure you check out Capital Mindset's um, latest video. Well, maybe not latest video, but uh, they go through Carnival like very, very deeply and tell you a lot of good information. So if you want more details, make sure you check out Capital Mindset. Um, but we're just going to be going through the numbers, so let's get to it. For the past five years, they're down 70%. Um, 2020 really did them in, and now they're trading at $15 a share. They've really been trading down for quite some time, so maybe this is a buying opportunity. Maybe since their fundamentals have improved quite a bit, they are ready to go on a bull run. So let's. Uh, their market cap is $19 billion, price to earnings ratio of 61. Right now, that's because their margins are so compressed. However, they will probably be able to expand their margins pretty soon in the future. Taking a look at the financials here, let's look at the revenue. Revenue is back to where it was in 2019. 2019, they were at 21 billion. Now they're back at 21 billion. So good sign there. And they'll probably grow a little bit more this year just because of inflation. They'll probably get up to like 25 or something. And then after that, they'll probably level off to their historical growth rate at about um, 7%. So um, pretty, pretty solid growth there. And uh, in terms of their income, well, they used to have really, really good incomes, $3 billion. However, even with their, their revenue being back to where it was, their gross margin isn't as high, their, their operating income isn't as high, and they also have this massive interest expense at $2 billion, and so that's why their, their income is negative. However, if, yeah, if they are able to grow their revenues, I do expect them to come into positive income territory. Um, balance sheet. The balance sheet is not great. They have a lot of debt. Twenty-nine billion in debt is is a lot, and they used to only have eleven billion. So, um, yeah, not the greatest balance sheet. But we'll just have to take that into account when we do the cash flow model. Let's look at the cash flow, and uh, they basically paid off lots of debt. So that's a good sign. Uh, yeah, very very good sign. They paid off a bunch of debt, lots of the high interest debt as well terms of their stats let's look at their margins so i i like to take these margins into account when i'm trying to figure out the numbers i want for my models and so we're looking at 30 percent and now they're at 22 but they'll probably be able to get this back to 30 percent i don't see a reason why they wouldn't be able to in terms of their operating margin they'll probably get back to 15 percent at least um now the, the tough thing is the net margin they will still have that interest expense so the net margin is going to take a hit. Um, it's not going to be 14%. We're not going to get back there. Probably going to be around 10%, um, maybe 9 So the net margin is not, not going to get back to that 15% unless they're able to pay off tons and tons of debt. So let's look at the analysts. The analysts are projecting 1.1 earnings per share, or 1.01, going up to 1.43 the year after. And they're looking at 24, almost $25 billion in revenue and increasing by five percent from there to almost 26 billion i think that's that's fairly accurate with what's going to happen um i don't see a reason why they won't be able to hit the hit these numbers taking a look at the stats let's look at the short percentage short percentage is around 11 percent um that's quite high that's kind of a red flag um however you know sometimes people shorting can be wrong but uh let's take a look at the model that i built for these guys let's uh let's see here so I put the uh, the estimates up here. Buybacks, they don't do any net debt of 29 billion. Discount rate 10% because I want a 10% return on all my stocks, you know, at least. And exit multiple of 20, I think that's fair. Um, I think that's around where they were trading before 2020. So I think 20 is fair for this company, especially if we're looking about 10 years down the line or seven years down the line. In terms of growth, I have their earnings growing at 15%. Um, Seems kind of high, but when you're when you're coming with such low margins and we're thinking margins are going to expand, then this could definitely happen. In terms of their revenue and margins model, uh, they're projecting 5% margins this year, actually. So um, if they hit that, I think that would be amazing. Um, they, they have had negative margins the past four years. So if they're actually able to come out with a 5% profit margin, that would be awesome. And I just have them slowly expanding these margins up back up to 10%. I don't think they're going to go above 10%. And 
unless they pay off tons and tons of debt. So I think 10% uh, is fair there. And growth of 5%. Now this could be higher, maybe around 6 or 7%, but we're, we're trying to be a little bit more conservative. 5%, there's definitely possibilities where this could be negative um, if the consumer is weak. But I think this is fair for the company. And in this case, we're looking at $35 a share is a fair share price. However, when you account for the amount of debt that this company has and that they will have to pay off eventually, then their fair share price drops down to $12 a share. Um, now, a lot of this, this uh, debt is actually very low interest. And so the debt is not like that big of a problem. Um, some of it is though. So some of it will have to get paid off right away. And that's why the fair share price should probably be in between these two numbers. Probably around, I probably put them around $25 a share um, would be the fair share price just because of the nature of their debt. And so if you're looking at a fair share price of around 25, then actually this should be better than 10% returns, assuming that these um, scenarios actually play out. We're looking at um, a 15% um, percent returns, is that right? Um, that drops the fair share price down to about 15. Yeah, I'd, I'd say about 15% returns. I'd say moving forward, you'd expect with Carnival Cruise Line. So so not too bad. Actually, the numbers do work out. I was kind of skeptical um, with the amount of debt that Carnival holds. But actually, they do, it does seem pretty solid. So yeah, that's what I think. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Uh, and uh, make sure to hit that like button. I'll see you in the next one.